Hi guys, welcome back to Fairy's Tutorials. In this session, we're looking at the subject CSEC Food, Nutrition and Health past paper question for the exam year 2023 and we're looking at question 2. It reads, differentiate between essential and non-essential amino acids, two marks, state two examples of low biological value proteins, two marks, state two examples of high biological value proteins, two marks, explain how each of the following affects the nutritive value of foods, six marks, now two marks each for agricultural practices, food purchasing practices, food preparation practices. And the last part says, state which figure or picture shows the child who has marasmus and which figure or picture shows the child who has kwashiokar. And follow up to that, you're supposed to state two symptoms that a child in picture B is likely to experience. Now, let's take a look at the ideal answers. Now, the first part to A, differentiate between essential and non-essential amino acids. This question is worth two marks. So, at least you must have two points so that you can get one point each for your risk, each point response right so non-essential amino acids can be made by the body while essential amino acids cannot be made by the body so you must get them from your diet right no i believe that's adequate for two marks because we have two point there but additional information may include the number of amino acids difference also lies in the importance of these amino acids in the diet now, as it relates to the number of amino acids, the essential amino acids, there are nine that cannot be produced by the body. And that is why they are called essential because our body needs them, but they cannot be produced by the body. So we have to take them in our diet, right? And non-essential amino acids, there are several, several of them that can be synthesized by our body bodies now as it relates to the importance essential amino acids uh, is crucial to the diet because it ensures adequate supply for protein synthesis and various physiological functions right now on the other hand non-essential amino acids while they are not required in the diet they still play an important part or an important role in various metabolic processes within our body so we can look at difference in in various ways so we can look at the difference as it relates to the source we can look at the difference as it relates to the number of amino acids and you can also look at the ingredients as it relates to its importance or function right so if you get this question you are able to answer it adequately now let's look at the next part. It says, state two examples of low biological value proteins and this question is worth two marks. It is important to note that low biological value proteins lack one or more of the essential amino acids. When we speak of the biological value of proteins, we're referring to the protein quality. Now normally, Low biological value proteins are of the plant source, right? That's the legumes and nuts. I remember the, the exception to the rule though is soybeans. But examples that we may state are peanuts, chickpeas, kidney beans, green peas, and lima beans are some example. But always remember that soybean, which is the plant source, is of high biological value. So we wouldn't list that one. Good. Next part, state two examples of high biological value proteins. No proteins of high biological value contains all the essential amino acids in their right proportion. So animal sources, good. So these are examples such as meat, poultry, fish, eggs, milk, cheese, yogurt, just to name a few. As gelatin, which is of the animal source, is also an exception to the rule because that 
lacks one or more of the essential amino acids so that wouldn't be listed here so you couldn't have like pig trotters you couldn't have like cow food because those are not high biological value proteins right next part explain how each of the following affects the nutritive value of foods now we have three factors here agricultural practices food purchasing practices and also food preparation practices remember when you're answering when you're answering these questions you're supposed to answer adequately so that you can get at least two mark your full two marks for each point right now let us look at some ideas that we could have as it relates to agricultural practices the methods used in farming such as the use of pesticides and fertilizers can impact the nutritional content of crops for example organic farming practices that avoid synthetic chemicals may result in higher levels of certain nutrients in produce additionally the soil quality and crop rotation methods used in agriculture can influence the general content of foods. Now, as it relates to food purchasing practices, the way consumers choose to purchase their food also affects its nutritive value. Opting for fresh fruits and vegetables over processed or packaged foods can lead to a higher intake of essential vitamins and minerals. Additionally, buying locally sourced products may ensure fresher produce with higher nutrient levels compared to items that have been transported for long distances so the ones that are pro that are purchased uh and go th goes through long distances may have some form of bruising and you may find out that the nutrient can also leach and be destroyed that way good also food preparation practices how food is prepared can impact its nutritional value cooking foods such as boiling steaming grilling or frying can alter the nutrient content of foods for instance boiling vegetables may lead to some loss of water soluble vitamins like vitamin c while grilling or roasting meats at high temperatures can create potentially harmful compounds like heterocyclic ions. Now, on the other hand, guys, cooking techniques like steaming can help retain more nutrients in food. Good. Next question. Say which figure or picture shows a child who has marasmus and which figure or picture shows a child who has Kwashiorkor. Now these images were given. So the the child at the top in picture A has marasmus, and the child in picture B has Kwashiorkor. Now it is important to note that the child in picture B, as you see the tummy there, it's not fat, but it's actually fluid retention. You may find fluid retention around the ankles as well. So always remember that a child with Kwashiorkor tend to look a little more plumped because of the swelling and a child with marasmus may have like a pigeon chest you may see you see the rib cages coming through there as well good next part say two symptoms that the child in picture b is likely to experience so as we were speaking of the child in picture b has kwashiorkor we were speaking about this swelling so edema one of the hallmark signs of kwashiorkor is edema which causes swelling in the ankles feet and belly due to fluid retention this swelling is a distinguishing feature of kwashiorkor compared to other forms of malnutrition and remember when we speak of malnutrition it can be overnutrition or undernutrition now as it relates to other symptoms there may be change in the skin and hair color and texture now individuals with kwashiorkor may experience changes in their skin and hair color often turning a rust color along with alterations in its texture as well fatigue they may feel weak because the body is lacking essential nutrients particularly protein and that is why these illnesses are classified as protein energy malnutrition good there's also diarrhea 
which um, digestive issues such will occur and further causing deficiency diseases because the body is not able to absorb any nutrients as it goes in it wants to come out right loss of muscle mass protein deficiency in kwashiorkor can lead to wasting of the muscles over time failure to grow or gain weight damage immune system these children are easily they easily become sick irritability you may notice behavioral changes as well uh, flaky rash so skin manifestations such as flaky rash may be present in individuals with severe malnutrition like kwashiorkor and finally we have on the list is shock now in severe cases kwashiorkor can lead to shock which is a life-threatening condition that requires immediate medical attention now this is an extensive list it just requires you for you to say two symptoms so make sure when you're putting your symptoms you don't just list but you add a little you know i don't want to say explanation but you add a little words to it so that you're stating rather than listing good no that is it for this question guys good luck you've made it to the end of the session please remember to subscribe turn on your post notification bells so you can be notified when there is another upload most importantly share with persons who you know will find this information useful thank you for making it fair to tutorials